Did you know that in the United States alone, about $40 billion worth of cardboard boxes are made each year? And they're often used just once and then thrown away. Let me walk you through the 13 steps it takes to make a new box, and then we'll compare that with the three simple steps we take here at usedcardboardboxes.com. It all starts by cutting down trees. This causes deforestation, erosion, requires massive fuel usage, causes pollution, and contributes to global warming. The cut logs are then loaded onto a tractor trailer and trucked to a pulp mill. This requires more fuel usage, which pollutes the air. And boy do those trucks clog the freeways. When the truck arrives at the mill, the logs are unloaded, cut up into little pieces, and processed into a soup-like pulp. To do this, they pour in lots of water and then add chemicals, which can cause air and water pollution. When the huge vats of pulp are mixed and ready, the pulp is often trucked, yes, trucked again, to a paper mill. This requires more fuel, more freeway congestion, and causes more emissions. At the paper mill, the pulp is processed to become, well, paper. This requires more chemicals and electricity and can cause even more pollution. And I wonder where they dump all that contaminated water they extracted from the pulp. After the paper's actually made, it's spun into huge rolls like giant paper towels. Then, to make cardboard for boxes, these giant rolls have to be trucked to a corrugating facility. Yup, you guessed it, more fuel, more trucks on the freeway, and more emissions. Once at the corrugator, these giant rolls are processed by gluing three sheets together to make cardboard boxes or pads. This requires electricity, causes pollution, uses chemicals, glues, dyes, and inks. Regardless if the corrugator has made actual boxes or just cardboard pads, they have to be trucked to a distributor. You know the drill, more gas, clogged freeways, and pollution. The distributor might print a logo on the boxes or die cut the pads to make custom boxes. Either way, it's more ink and electricity. When the boxes are ready, they're loaded onto a truck so the distributor can deliver them to a retail location. More gas, more freeway congestion, more emissions. Once the boxes arrive at the retailer, they sit on shelves waiting for customers. All week long, those retailers use more and more electricity just to keep the lights on to advertise their boxes. In order to prepare for a move, customers just like you often have to drive to the store to pick up the boxes. More fuel, roadway congestion, and emissions. Now that you've purchased your boxes, it's time to drive back home, unload them, and start packing. Yet another use of fuel, road congestion, and source of emissions. I don't know about you, I'm tired and I haven't even started packing. As you can see, this is an elaborate and consumptive process that places heavy demands on our natural resources. But now, have a real quick look at the three simple steps it takes usecardboardboxes.com to get quality used boxes right to your door. UCB trucks quality used boxes from local companies back to local warehouses. This requires fuel and causes emissions, but we use common carriers to reduce congestion and optimize our loads. We then carefully sort, inspect, and pack the very same boxes into our convenient moving kits. This requires good old-fashioned manual labor and some electricity so we can see what we're doing. Every day, UPS comes to each of our regional distribution centers to pick up our moving kits and deliver them to our local customers. This requires some fuel and causes some emissions. But because UPS trucks are already on the road and en route to each neighborhood, our kits just go along for the ride. We selected UPS as our carrier of choice thanks to their new clean fleet, which helps minimize their environmental footprint. Well, thanks for taking the time to learn about usedcardboardboxes.com, North America's cheapest, easiest, and most earth-friendly way to get boxes for packing, moving, shipping, and storage.